So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God. Amen. And please be seated, but not for too long. All right, so today we're doing a baptism. And my question is to you, what is baptism? I don't ask this rhetorically because statistics show at some point in time, someone is going to ask you this question. I've just come back from clergy conference, right? It's like going to Renaissance Fair. Like all these people dressed really funny, hanging out together in some weird little subculture, right? All the clergy get together once a year. We share wisdom. We talk about what's working for us, what's not working for us. We learn from one another. This year they brought in uh, a guy, the Reverend Dr. Dwight Shiley. One of the, the Stanford-educated folks who went on to be ordained in the Episcopal Church and then got a Ph.D. in congregational leadership. Loves to crunch numbers, loves to, to be able to put that into strategy and thought for church. And what he shared with us, some of it we already knew, right? Less people are coming to church on Sunday mornings. We've seen that across the, the mainline denominations, across the evangelical denominations as well. Sunday mornings, fewer and fewer people are showing up in the pews. Perhaps more surprising, though, is that more and more people are looking to know about baptism and about life with Christ. We've seen a spike in things like The Chosen. Millions of people are watching this show, trying to figure out what is this Christianity about. Other folks are turning to YouTube, right? YouTube changes everything. I can now change like the, the uh, what is it, the, the valve cover gasket in my Dodge Ram because of YouTube, right? I can look at that, and if I have patience, yeah. And the same thing applies. Like if I look at YouTube, how do I do a baptism? It'll run me through how to do a baptism, right? So YouTube is a place. But more than ever, people are turning to their friends or even their acquaintances who know something about Christianity. Hey, you went to church once, right? Or you've watched this before, right? Like, and so the chances of you being asked, who is Jesus or what is baptism, have really gone up. And so Dwight's point for us clergy was, you're not going to get asked that so much, but your people are. And so part of what I hope to do today is to help you answer that question. What is baptism? What does it mean? Why should I do it? So if someone asked you what's going on, you might have a word or two to share with them. So all that's to say is we're going to do an instructed baptism. You have any questions along the way, raise a hand and be like, whoa, 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 why are we doing that? All right, if someone asks me, I want to be able to, to explain that, okay? So this will be a little interactive. We'll see how this goes. That's why we cut a reading, because I have a feeling it might go a little bit wrong. So to that end, we have a baptismal family. And I will turn to the baptismal family, and they will present baby Noah here in a second. All right, y'all ready? All right, let's roll to this slide. Here we go. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Yeah. Woohoo, you did it! Right? Notice they each said I. As their godparents, this is a personal promise on their behalf to Noah. Each one of them individually, not we, each one of them individually are promising to watch over this child as he grows in his stature in Christ. All right, godparents and parents, uh, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you are pre you, uh, that you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Right, again, they say they will and they recognize they are not alone, right? God walks with them. This faith journey. Yeah, Georgia, it's not alone. We do it together. All right, next question. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Nicely done. All right. We go to these ancient questions. All right. You're going to read these, and you're going to hear them. You're going to be like, what year is this? 425? All right. And that is the case. These are very ancient questions that we ask of this family. 
The general idea being is baptism is about letting go, relinquishing, being cleansed of sin, and turning and being brought to new life. So I mean that, you know, I used to do prison ministry. When we say, hey, do you, you know, renounce all your sin? Yeah, those guys, and there was always guys I was with in prison. They said, yeah, and that's a powerful moment, right? But it's also with a baby like Noah, recognizing that we are born into a sinful world. We are part of a network of exploitation, of injustice, of war, of death. Right? And so it's washing those bonds, or at least loosening those bonds on Noah as he grows to be able to create bonds of life. And so in that turning, I was joking with them, we used to face to the west, right? And we used to face the, to, to the west, to the darkness, and we would do the renunciations, at the end of which, we would spit. You spit at the devil? Pfft, don't do that here, right? <laughs> and, then, and then we would turn and face to the east, right? I'm thankful St. Mark's is laid out, east, west, that kind of thing. We turn and we face to the east, to the rising sun, and we say that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. All right? So we are a new creation. We are bound together in life, resurrection. We no longer need to fear death. So they're going to make these promises, but all of us should hear this and be reminded that we are turning from death to life. All right. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Nice. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Nice. Turning to the east, you're already there. Very good. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? All right. Now, this next question is to all of you. The Episcopal Church no longer does private baptisms. We haven't since 1979. Anytime there is a, a baptism, we invite other parishioners to be a part of that. This is a communal act. One of the biggest problems in our world today is isolation, right? And we want to make a statement that if you are baptized into the household of God, you are not alone. We have to love you, right? No matter who you are, where you go, you will be loved. That's at least our hope. That's aspirational. So in that sense, right, we who are here watching this baby get baptized on the most local level, I'm going to ask you, will you support Noah and his life in Christ? I jokingly told the parents, if you need a babysitter, if you need someone to watch the dog while you're gone, turn around and look at these people. They're making vows, right? No, in all seriousness, though, like we're here to support those who are growing in Christ. And so, to all of you, I expect you to, to respond with gusto. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this little man and his life in Christ? Yeah. Nice, that was a good response. All right, then I invite you to join with me by standing and we say together our baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? 
Will you seek and serve Christ and all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? If anyone asked you, what do we believe? What is our baptismal moment, our, the core of our belief? This baptismal covenant in your books of common prayer, it's a good place to go. All right? All right. So we continue and we pray for Noah, who's about to receive the sacrament of baptism. So, faith, ladies, yeah? Let me see if I got them up here. All right, I need an assist. Can I have a book of common prayer? Boom, thank you. All right, come on forward. So, y'all going to go back and forth? Mm -hmm. There you go. So, this is Children's Sunday, and it's a delight to have all these youth readers come up here. Uh, it's not easy to stand up here and talk into the mic. So, yes, thank you for being brave, uh, braver than a lot of us adults are. So, yeah, this is, this is cool. Okay, here we go. Prayers for the candidates. You're going to say, deliver him. Yeah, deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Okay? Him. That's right. So, they, so, I don't know if it's up here. We put that stuff in italicize. I should stop, actually. This is a good point. Anybody else want to be baptized? Ooh, there's that question, right? Yeah, so we're not a church of the altar call kind of thing, but we're also a church like the opportunity presents itself. Usually, more people are about this down at the river. They're like, ooh, maybe. It doesn't sound bad. Yeah, here in the church, yeah. But I always feel like I got to offer. So, any takers? Okay, so yeah, we're going to do him. All right, but we can do him or them or her. Italicized means we've got options. All right, you ready? All right. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness in witness your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. All right. So we're going to head back to the font. Kids, if you want to come back and get a better view, you can hardly see anything from over there. So not just kids. If you're short like me and you have a tough time seeing family, come on back. We'll let the family gather around first. Everybody else, gather around. You might get splashed, which is kind of fun. It'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. You, no ponchos on the front row, but we're good. All right. I need another prayer book. I did that again. Woo, come on, come on back, y'all. All right, good. Oh, good, that might be better. Uh, <laughs> ooh, come on back, y'all. Say, all right. Can y'all see? Good, good, all right. So the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. So pause for a second. So we've got well water from our property. This is from a ewer. That's the fancy Episcopal name for this thing. It says Christ Church of Norwich, Connecticut to St. Mark's of San Marcos, Texas. Anybody know where this came from? Well, I know Connecticut. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I, these are some of the wonderful, beauty, beautiful things of the church. Like, this is a beautiful silver ewer that someone gave to us. I don't know what 
the story is behind it. So if you're out there or watching from home, you know the story behind this ewer, let me know. So it is full of water. We're going to put it in. It is the outward and visible symbol of baptism. You'll also see me put a little cruet of water. This is water from the Jordan. Not necessary for baptism, but very cool if you have it. All right. So thankful for this community that has traveled to the Holy Land numerous times. We're going to pour that in as well. As you listen to the prayer over this, kind of, yeah, make some connections. Death over life, new beginnings, resurrection, all of this type of uh, theology. So here we go. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Short pour, the long pour. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, to the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Baby Noah, we can do this. Mama's right here. She's right here, buddy. All right. Noah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo! You, Mama, are going, yeah, yeah. We got it. You can take the mic. Yeah. You know, I didn't think about that Noah and that water kind of thing. Yeah, you're like, woo. All right, so. I'm also going to pass on a baptismal candidate. So every person who's baptized gets a candle from us. And I'll hand it to Daniel. Dad, this is the light of Christ, right? The darkness has not overcome the light. The light shines in his life. Whenever you need it, buddy, the light of Christ is there for you. And don't worry about blowing it out. We talked about it. Yeah, it burns in our hearts. Okay, yeah. Also in the Episcopal Church. So if you're out there and... This is where it gets really interesting. Technically speaking, all of you that have been baptized, you all are a priesthood of all believers. You can baptize other people. It's the one sacrament right, that is open to, the, to be performed by the priesthood of all believers. So someone may ask you, you know, somewhere down the road, will you baptize me? The answer is yes, right? Now, you can send them to the church. It's good to be part of a community, that kind of stuff. But sometimes you don't have that option, right? I think the NICU nurses and L&D nurses do more baptisms than priests do, right? If you find yourself in a place where you need to baptize, it's within your power. All you need to do is say their name. So in this case, you would say, Noah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. They are baptized at that point. We in the Episcopal Church, we like to seal, all right? So this is holy oil. This is chrism blessed by a bishop, all right? So only a bishop can make chrism. And in the, the chrism, we turn to his forehead, if you'll let me. Noah, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. And again, another reminder that he is sealed in this family, in this, uh, in this community, in this beloved uh, uh, household of God. All right, you did it, bud. Good job. Uh, all right, so now it is a St. Mark's tradition, if you move the slides forward a little bit. After we finish, we'll say a little prayer here, and then we're going to sing A Child of Light. So let's, uh, let's say a prayer. This is one of my favorite prayers, and then we'll, we'll wander back up during the song. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this, your servant, the forgiveness of sin 
and have raised him to new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. <laughs>